Hey guys, this is Mr. V, and this is episode two of Apes Topic uh, or Apes, Apes Unit 3.2. Um, so this one's going to be about R selected and K selected species. So the difference between an R selected and K selected species are to um, the best way to look at that is to look at your um, uh, growth charts and see how a population can grow. So as you can see here. Um, this right here is exponential growth, that's typically known as a J-curve, and then logistic growth is typically known as your um, S-curve, right? And so what's happening here is that um, K-selected species tend to live around the carrying capacity. So carrying capacity is how much the environment um, can pretty much uh, support a population. Um, and so that species tends to do pretty well and live at their means and don't go too far. Whereas our selected species, they live by the reproductive capacity. So instead of living by the carrying capacity of the environment, um, our selected species, they end up doing as best they can, having as many babies as they can. Um, and that's their big, um, you know, not, not so much claim to fame, but that's their big um, strategy to get through this. Um, and so that's what they call biotic potential. So if you look at the J curve right here, um, it ends up growing pretty fast and it just continues to double until it goes up and up and up. And so uh, we'll talk about this later is a little more, but the logistic curve is a little bit the same for a, pro a portion of it, but then it ends up flattening it out. And so we'll talk more about that later. But some characteristics of these species. Uh, K-selected uh, species tend to be pretty large species. Mammals are a big, um, you know, uh, large mammals tend to be uh, K-selected species. So you've got things like buffalo or bison and elephants are pretty common examples. Um, they don't have very often uh, reproductive events. Um, they live in pretty stable environments, so they're not, uh, it's, things are not totally changing all the time. And they devote most of their energy to parental care. Um, you know, some species, like for example, the elephant species, uh, many of them are pregnant for two years and um, they spend their entire lives in family pods. So they're, they devote their entire energy to care for the young. And they tend to have long lifespans um, and they reproduce several times in their lives. So it's not like they're reproducing, um, you know, right, one right after another, but they do tend to reproduce multiple times. And um, they do have to deal with resource competition. So because they're not usually wide ranging, things like that, they tend to have to deal with resource uh, you know, competition in their habitats. Whereas an R selected species is basically the opposite of all those. They tend to be smaller species. You can have some mammals that are R selected, like a rat. Okay, rats tend to have lots of babies. They don't devote too much parental care, um, and they, um, you know, mature pretty quickly. And their lifespans are not very long. So another example of this would be like salmon. You know, salmon are classic for their salmon runs. So um, that's something that definitely is um, that's something that's a good example of an R selected species. Um, or you can think of weeds like dandelions as well. Usually they have one big reproductive event and their event is to get as much, you know, uh, uh, of the next generation to be fertilized and born, so to speak, for the next group. And that will allow for um, them to, to be as successful as they can be. Um, and they don't have to deal with so much with competition, competition for habitat um, because they tend to move quite a bit. You know, I mean, if you think about salmon, salmon are... Um, I believe it's anadromous, um, but they uh, end up living in the ocean and they come to freshwater to uh, to spawn and then they go back out to the ocean and they just come back for that event. So uh, they're not really worried about the, the habitat resources in their areas. But what I will say is there is some gray area. So think about the sea turtle. This is a leatherback sea turtle picture. Okay, And so leatherback sea turtles they are very long-lived species. So right there, that's an indicator for a K-selected species. So we're going to check mark those. So long-lived, okay, large species. Leatherbacks tend to be almost uh, six to eight feet uh, in length, right? Um, both width and length. Um, but here's the thing. So we're going to put X's for the R-selected traits. They are they have large numbers of offspring, okay? And then they don't have any parental care. They lay their eggs on the beach and then they take off back to the ocean, um, sometimes typically back to their spawning grounds uh, to get the next batch uh, made. And then the young ones are on their own. You know, um, sea turtles on their own, they have very uh, limited um, numbers that survive to adulthood. Um, before humans, it was one in a hundred eggs that would make it to adulthood. Um, with human involvement, you know, you know uh, the things we do to beaches and poaching and things like that, 
it's now one in a thousand. So they have very they have very few successes, but they end up having a lot of eggs to try to maximize their success. So don't think of it as terms of it's always R, it's always K. There may be a gradient there, you know. Um, so you know, hares tend to live. Uh, they tend to have 12 offspring a year. Frogs can have 200. Oysters can have 5 million offspring in a year. And then you can have all the way on the extreme end for the K, those would be like large pumas or cats uh, or chimpanzees. They'll have a baby every couple of years to every five years. So, um, But there's a gradient there. And so um, on a free response question or maybe a multiple choice, they'll likely ask you a question having to do with one or the other. But just know that there may be some species that count as that gray area of species. So don't, don't be surprised when that happens. Okay, and then so some typical issues that these species might have. A, a case-selected species uh, tends to be affected by invasives a lot more, right? So um, here you've got and the two examples. You've got the European rabbit, okay? Um, and so it's a, an invasive species. It's a generalist, right? Um, and so it's also more of an R-selected species. It has a lot of babies, and it out-competes out and out-consumes this other small marsupial mammal called the greater bilby in Australia, okay? Um, and so because the European rabbit was brought in for hunting, um, it became an invasive species, and it does much better than that greater bilby, and the greater bilby is now um, an endangered species, uh, or at least threatened. So that's something that we mentioned in the last PowerPoint with our... With, um, uh, our uh, invasives and generalists and specialists um, and now we're talking about R and K and so there's a connection there to be to be made a little bit um, and this is a good example so when they do ask that on the um, uh, on free response that would be something that would be a good example to use okay so here's some other resources hopefully you can check some of those out and um, hopefully that was helpful thank you